Welcome, everybody. This is episode 22 of the Next Generation of Superstars. We're very grateful to have Jalen Jones, who was originally from Champaign, Illinois, and now playing at running back at Bethel University in Tennessee. Welcome to the show. Appreciate you for having me. Absolutely, man. So tell us a little bit more about how you really started to define your passion uh, for the sport of football. Oh, no, man. Uh, growing up, a lot of my family played sports, so it was kind of like I'm always around it. At first, it was like a thing where it's like, man, I got to do this. I seen this person do it. So like now right. I'm to the point where I see where it can take me. I see where like not even as far as a football aspect of things, but like just in life in general. Like I'd have met so many people, just networking, being on the same team as people, competing against people. And just like to me, a far, like far in life. And you know what I mean? It took me places that I never thought I really would go unless I become a rapper or something. Right. Like that. <laughs> like, it, That's it, awesome. It also helped me like, it also helped me with like, like as far as day to day activities and things, like everybody go through obstacles and whatnot. But like football is my getaway. So like, right. I feel like it helped me become a better man in a lot yeah. of no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Has there been uh, any particular skills that you've learned that's really helped you um, develop as you, you've gone through your career so far? Uh, yeah, time management, number one. I mean, that, that I, used to, I used to suck with time management. So, like, I'm real big on, like, procrastinating even to this day. So, like, <laughs> and it, it, ain't go, it ain't no being late, like, no more. Like, when you're in the college, right. it ain't no being late no more. So, because, like, you know, like, you want to be here. And being late, even though you're a better athlete or whatever it is, it might knock you down. It's, so right. little, it's not discipline. So, like, that and then another thing I feel like I gained was leadership. I feel like in a lot of different aspects, like, like growing up, I got a lot of older cousins. So I was kind of, like, always the one that's following them. I really wasn't the one that's, like, we about to do this. So, like, now, <laughs> now I feel like I gained a lot of skills where it's, like, y'all follow me. And I got right. that. You know what I mean? So. That's those, awesome. I love it. I love it. And what about, you know, the rest of your family and friends, you know, how have they kind of supported you as you really started to, to take your, um, your craft more seriously as you, as you grow throughout the game? Uh, they always there. Like my entire life, like in high school, I did track. I played a little, I hooped a little bit. Uh, I played football and like, that's from freshman to senior year. I think my parents or my mom or my grandma, I think they probably only missed 10 events from, over four the course of four years and three different sports, they probably only missed 10 events, whether it's game or track meet or not. So like just always having them there to support me, like I always knew that they like they was bought in. If I wanted to do it, they wanted to do it. The times where I doubted myself, they still helped me like get my head back on track and understand that I set out to accomplish the mission. I need to accomplish that. Right. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think that's incredible to have that support. Um, because it really is impactful, right? To be able to have your, your family, friends, and everyone else, your peers support you and what you're doing with your mission. And, um, you know, what, what about your community back home in Champaign? How has that been? Um, if you go back there and kind of give back to the community or how's that kind of yeah. support been from them? Yeah, so I ain't really like, I still got places I still, I'm still trying to get. So I ain't been able to give back like I wanted to, but like, I definitely, <laughs> like anytime I'm back home, I definitely like hit up the dudes that I play ball with or that's currently playing ball, try to get right. them to, like, just like give back or whatnot. Like I, it was one thing that I did. I donated a lot of like my gear and like gloves and stuff to like the youth there just to show them that like, yeah, it might be a little community out here, but like we still, we still got some notable names that made it out. So it's still possible. You just gotta like stay true to it. But like also like anytime I'm back home and I see somebody, they, oh, I'm happy that you're doing this. It's good seeing you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Like that's yep. good. You know what I mean? So like they support me and they got my support. So. We just, we, rock, we go rock it out. I love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And Jalen, what about, um, you know, just being a student athlete, you know, for, for the fans out there that haven't experienced that, what has that experience been like for you um, to just be able to play the sport you love and, and being a student athlete and kind of balancing out everything that you, you have to juggle every day? Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the best thing that ever, like, that could possibly happen to me. Like, like just being able to go to school and pursue what I want to do, because, like, at first, you're thinking when you're out of high school, I ain't really worried about the academics. I mean, yeah, I want a degree, but, like, I'm trying to go play ball. You know <laughs> right. I, mean? right. I want to play ball, have a little bit of fun, but, like. 100%. When you get there, you, you realize that, like, it's so much more to this. It's so much more to just playing ball, so much more than just partying. Like, the network, like the networking and the, the opportunities that can come across your face on a daily basis is crazy. So, like, it's, it's been yeah. great. It's definitely going to be as highs and lows. 
but long right. as you got your head on right and you go go to class and and take them notes and go to them uh what do you call it the teacher hours you're gonna be good <laughs> exactly exactly what's been um you know, just this, all of that is exciting to speak as an athlete in general, but what about one of your most memorable games that you've had so far, you know, in the past few years that you've been playing? Man, I'm going to always say this. This is going to always be my senior night at high school. Man, me and my boys, and I thought you played this team called Danville, a couple of my other homies on the opposing team. You know what I mean? They city like 25, 30 minutes away. So the community there uh, yep. went out there, had like six touchdowns. I really wow. think I had like seven, but like one of them got called back or something crazy. <laughs> but, but it was just funny because like the entire game, like I think that's when I realized, like even though I was a high school, I was already committed to school. I was like, I think that's when I realized how much I actually, actually love football because I was out there just having a ball. It wasn't even about X's and O's. And it was just right. about having fun with the person that's next to me. That's awesome. Just, You're just doing your thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm just doing my things. You know what I mean? So it's like. I think that probably be the most memorable game. Me and my homies had a lot of a lot of talk leading up to the game, playing our other homies. I can't. I think kind of gave them bragging rights, but you know what I mean. It was it was a good game. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. And it's to be able to look back on that and have that experience and cherish it with with your friends and um, you know your teammates and everybody that you experienced it with is awesome. And you know, there's been something huge that's happened in your career so far, which is the NIL being legitimized. When you saw that happen in the summer of 2021, and you spoke a lot about just networking and being able to, to meet different people in different brands and industries, what was your reaction when that happened in uh, the summer of 2021? Oh, it's time to get paid. It's time to get it. paid, man. <laughs> I mean, like, like growing up, okay, my, my, my oldest sister, she ran Division One track. She ran at uh, University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. My younger sister ran track at Eastern Illinois. So, like, I had been seeing how, how far this can take you, but I also been seeing that like, right. you ain't go profit as much as you think you go profit. But with the NIL space, this is like, man, I'm getting paid for doing what I'm doing. Those times I'm out there busting my tail, working out, no cameras, no nothing. It's, it can all, it can eventually show off. Like, you know what I mean? Like people, yep. my fans can really engage into who I am. You know what I mean? And, and different ways where I can connect with them. Like, whether that's be through social media, be face-to-face -face interactions, and also can profit off of it. Because being a college student, like, yeah, you can get stipends, you can get financial aid back and all this other crazy things, but have, being able to focus on your sport and make money off of what you're doing, like the people that you look up to, it right. also opens your eyes to a different, to like a different perspective of things. Yeah, no, it's incredible. I'm able to have that. It's just, um, it, it's powerful, right? You know, you're, you know, college athletes, you guys already go through so much on a day-to-day -day basis now to be re finally rewarded for that. I mean, it was a long time coming to finally have that happen. And um, it's, it's truly amazing. Um, what, what is kind of your vision right now with your career and where you want to take it? Do you want to take it to the next level or what, what's kind of your, your aspirations? Yeah. Um, I might, my, my goal right now is definitely to knock out this last year's school and declare. So I'm doing everything in my power to make sure I get there. Now I love it. Now it's just up to God now. I love it. No, we're, we're wishing you, the, we have, we're behind you wishing you all the best because that's just incredible to be able to take it to the next stage um, and the next level. Has there been any memorable um, just mentors or coaches that have really kind of helped you, um, you know, shape into the individual you are today? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. Most definitely. Okay. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to take it way, way back when I was in Pop Warner. It was my coach <laughs> called, named, named Coach Preston. I forgot, I think he was from the East Coast, but he had like this, this way he, had, he just talked and I'm from the Midwest. So it was like, everything he said sounded like something straight out of a movie. Right. Man, him, him just showing me that like football can be fun. Just, hey, I know it was Pee Wee, but it could be fun. Our Pee Wee team was good. So like, it was also a little bit of discipline. But like, <laughs> he stayed on my case. Like he was working me out. Like even after practices, like I was in high school already. I right. was in like fifth grade, but like he just, so he molded me. He molded me. He got me there. And then I had a high school coach called Coach Blandon. I still talk to him still to this day. I think he just got the head coach job at our high school. That's and awesome. He just really took it there as, as, a, as a man to man. Just this is where I want you to be. This is where you cannot settle at being. So like him, then as far as mentor, had a mentor named uh, Kevin Bookie. Man, he's been my dog my whole life. And, and he always he always helped me stay level headed, stay humble. And yep. if some good happen, he always gonna find a way to tell me, bring it back down. You still got things that right. you need to accomplish. So like he helped me stay 
stay positive and not get that big head and then start falling off doing this and that and doing this and that. But then I, in college, I just uh, recently, last year and a half, I had a coach named Coach Dennis. He was at Missouri Valley. And he, the way I just connected with him on and off the field, it was just like, it's just, you never had a connection with somebody and it's just like, man, you know, like we ain't even got to have known each other for a long time, but I know you locked in like I'm locked in. Right. It was, it was awesome. Great relationships. Definitely. No, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. And what about, um, you know, every athlete's going to have their, you know, failure, setbacks. Uh, how do you get past those obstacles and those challenges and, and, and really push through and, and grind and, and hustle to make it happen? Uh, don't really, really. The thing that I can say is don't let them define you. Everybody will go through something. It's just how you react to it. And I used right. to think that was straight out of movie, but now, now I'm living it now. So like, yeah, things get bad, but like some way you got to try to find something positive. Yeah, and you ain't feeling good. I mean, at least you can open your eyes. You know what I mean? You got to try to find something that's gonna balance that thing back out, and right. just try to work to get there. Even though it might be hard, you got to stay level headed. Yep. No, it's, it's all great pieces of advice, and um, you know, especially you having a good fan base. How do you interact with your fans, both now on social media and I you know off the field, um, in person? You know, what what's kind of been your your way to communicate with your fans and show that love and support back to them? Uh, social media, social media definitely played a big part in that. So like. Yep. Whenever I post something, I always got it was my friends, was young young dudes in the community, uh, kids from here, kids from there, my family. They always react and they always responding to what I'm posting. So like I always try to find a way to keep them up to date with what I got going on. Whether it's an NIL deal, whether it's just me working out, whether it's me trying new food, um, whether it's this podcast, whatever it is, I just try to yeah. always engage with them. Then as far as off the field, I always to like. Wherever I'm at, I always try to engage with the youth, no matter what it is, like whether it's a boys and girls club, whether it was just like me volunteering at a um, local high school, middle school, something like that. Like just being able to show them kids who I am off the field, too, because a lot of times right. people get that confused. They think that you're the same person on the field. Off the field. It's, it ain't really like that. Like I like a, I, to be honest, I think I'm a little I'm, I'm kind of a big teddy bear. So like the kids like I <laughs> I mean, so, they're, all, they're all coming to give you a big hug. Yeah, so like, it, it, like engaging with them is easy to me. I prefer to even engage with them in person, but like a lot of times, like my time be like a little booked up. But right, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's awesome to be able to to give back because you're a role model to the youth, right? And to be able to give back and do different events and stuff with the youth, um, and show them that it is possible, right? If you if you set your mind to it, you can achieve those goals and really live out the dream that you want to do, um, and, and whatever it is. Right. So I think that's that's great to hear. Um, what about outside of football, Jalen? Has there been any hobbies or interests when you do have some free time on your hands that you, you loved and, and enjoyed? Yeah, for sure. Um, so one thing I did do, I got into photography about a year ago. I stopped within the last few months, but I got into to photography. And I think that like people don't got this hobby. Y'all need to go get try to get into photography. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but it's actually real common. Uh, I, I love music, fashion. Now, I, don't know, I, yeah. just like, I love to travel. I've been so many different places. I would never even dream of going, but, and, and met so many different people, but like just being able to spend time with my friends and family is probably like, no matter what it is that we're doing, we're trying something new. So like, I'm open for whatever. I, I love hate it. setting myself to these, my hobbies, I'm open or whatever. It's yeah. all. Yeah. I mean, you like have different experiences and do different stuff. And um, I, I think being an open-minded person like you are, and, and optimistic and positive, right? You're able to go and try different things and, and do stuff. Um, I, I think that's that's all great things. What what are some of your goals this year? Now we've gotten one month down in 2023, both as an athlete and individual. What are some of your top goals that you're looking to to dominate and conquer? Just be the best, be the best person I can be. I don't really, I don't really try to break it down into things. I just try to in, in every aspect of what I do, just be the present I can be. And if yep. I'm not doing the best I can be, then I got to come back and revisit it as like talk to myself. I love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and, you know, we spoke a little bit about the youth, but we'll kind of wrap things up here in this podcast. What are three pieces of advice or lessons that have really helped you in your life that you would pass down to this next generation um, that can help them in their own unique journey? Uh, like I just said, be the best that you can be. Uh, never give up. And just make sure that if you set out to go get it, then make sure you get it one way or another. Don't don't let don't let something knock you down. Like, right. like it sounds easier said than done, but like at the end of the day, you got yourself. It's always ways to get around these obstacles. Hundred percent. 
stay stay positive and be that it. best that you can be. That's awesome. Okay, and just to recap what you said, you said be the best you can be. Number two, never give up. Um, and three, if you have these dreams and aspirations, go and make it happen um, and stay positive and, and go and do the thing and make it happen. Most definitely, definitely. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate you, Jalen Jones, running back at Bethel University, being on our podcast, episode 22. Go and follow him on social media, everything else, to keep updated with him and his journey uh, as he continues to, to strive for greatness. We appreciate you for being on the show. Appreciate you for having me.